In FeatureCam 2014 R2, we've now implemented support for right-angled or aggregate heads. In the case of this component, you can see we've got a number of internal pockets. If I was to look from the side view of this part, you'll notice that we can't actually view the pockets from this orientation. So clearly we have an access issue. A right-angled head, however, will solve this issue by allowing us to machine these pockets and plunging into the centre to do so. So the first thing I want to do is to create my pocket feature. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new feature, a terminal feature, and create a pocket and use extract with feature recognition. Choose next. I'm going to orientate my surface normal towards that face. Choose next again. And I'm going to use the horizontal surface selection and then add that surface in. I'm also going to add this side surface as well because that will help me define the depth a lot quicker. So there's my pocket created. I'm going to go through, step through all the default options until I get to the tooling selection. Now in this case it's chosen a large tool to machine this as best it can. I'm going to choose a slightly smaller tool in this case. And in this case I'm going to set a 32mm diameter and then choose the 32mm tool. The rest of the options I'm going to leave as default. So that's now created my feature, um, but of course I need to set the tooling in order to machine this feature itself. Now what we want to do is we want to set up this part to allow us to do uh, or to support uh, a right angled head. So the first thing we must do is go to the setup and if you edit the setup and go all the way to the last page you'll see there is a new page that allows us to support the right angled head. In this case it's just a simple checkbox that says we want to allow features to be created which can be cut with a right angle tool holder. I'm going to say finish to that and that's modified the setup. Now when we go to our pocket feature you'll notice that you get a new tab that says right angled head but of course we need the tooling that's required for this. If we go over to the, uh, the levels area we can see we've got an, an additional level that says right angled head. If I was to turn this level on I'm just going to make this my active layer, turn off layer 1 and hide the stock. I'm just going to shade the model up and view the side of this. So here you can see my right angled head has already been pre-created. In this case you can see I've got uh, my orientation correctly positioned. And at the moment you can see that's my setup location. If I was to turn on the stock axis you can see the zero face is where the tool will attach. And of course we have to measure the gauge length of the tool uh, and where we meet the spindle phase. So these two values that we've got here are absolutely critical. We've got the center line to the face of the tool uh, mounting point and we've also got the length of the, the holder itself. So with those two critical values we can go ahead and edit the tool uh, and implement a right angled holder. So let's go back into our pocket, into the roughing operation and I've got my tool here so I'm going to create a new tool based on this one I'm just going to simply call this one RAH for right angled head. So I'm going to apply that and then I'm going to go to my holder area and in this case I'm going to use the mill turn spindle so that's fine and what I want to do is I want to add the, the holder itself. So let's create a new holder and in this case I'm going to call this one RAH as well, keep things simple. We're going to fit to that mill turn spindle and I'm going to set, in this case, I'm working in a metric document so I want to turn the inches setting off. Next I go to the use solid holder to describe the shape. So this is something new that we implemented in FeatureCam 2014. And now I can go and choose which solid I want to use. In this case, quite clearly we've labelled the name of the solid right angled head. Select that and you can see the right angled head now appears in the screen like so. I can now go over to my uh, values and enter the size that I want. So in this case we have an offset uh, x direction which in this case is that distance there. I'm going to enter 25 and of course we've got the, got the length which in this case is 112. So those two values are set for the size of the holder. We've also got the uh, checkbox so we want to indicate that this is an angled head and then we've got two choices. We can either set a variable angle and we can allow us, that allows us to manipulate the head itself or we can set a fixed angle that we don't want to move the tool from. I'm going to set this to be a variable head because I want to do multiple indexes around the component. Once we're happy with that we can say OK 
and you'll notice we get our right angle head with the tool mounting like so. I'm going to say OK to that, set the new tool as override and say yes. That tool is now set for both the roughing and the finishing. We can now go back to our pocket and over to our right angled head tab and tell it that we want to use the right angled head. We simply check the box and in this case of course the feature is on the inside diameter so I'm going to indicate that I want to locate this on the inside diameter. If we have a, a turn mill machine where we have uh, difficult access we can also indicate what the orientation of the tool is on the spindle. In this case I'm using a mill turn machine, this is a DMG DMC125FD so I can index the tool around and I've got plenty of area to reach when I want to machine. Let's apply and say OK and accept that feature. I'm now going to make my layer 1 active and just turn off the right angled head to hide that geometry and turn off my stock axis. So I've now created my single feature. You can verify this by doing a machine simulation. So there's my part on the machine. We can go ahead, run through the sequence. Let's just drop the speed of the simulation down. So I've got some facing operations, some hole drilling. We index round, finish the hole drilling on this side. And now you can see the right angled head comes in to position and allows us to machine that pocket. Like so. So let's stop that simulation. Let's go ahead and create a pattern of these features because we've got a number of uh, similar pockets around the outside of the profile. So I'm going to create a turn mill item and I'm going to go and create a pattern. And in this case I'm going to select that pocket and choose next. We're going to go radial around the index axis. Next again. And in this case we've got 30 of these items at a spacing angle of 12 degrees. We can preview and say finish. I've now created multiple index features around the component. Again, I'm just going to do a single step to set up my simulation and then run through the sequence to create my part. Now you can see the indexing process as it makes its way around. 